Hi there. My name's Daniel Doty. I'm a shoulder and elbow surgeon in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And today we're going to review a case using the Arthrex augmented modular glenoid system to manage a patient with anterior glenoid bone loss, chronic anterior subluxation, and an antiverted glenoid. This patient is a 73-year-old male. He lives alone. He's right-hand dominated and presented to my office complaining of right shoulder pain and dysfunction for seven months. He was initially injured after he was struck by a car. He sought care in an outside ER and underwent a reported close reduction maneuver, although details were unavailable. He was subsequently treated in a late fashion with orthopedic follow-up. At that time, it was recommended that he maximize non-operative care. His primary complaint to me was that he was having difficulty living alone and performing self-care activities due to continued shoulder dysfunction and a secondary complaint of moderate, constant underlying pain exacerbated by activity. His physical exam was pertinent for a functional axillary nerve, limited and painful passive range of motion, and active range of motion that nearly equal passive range of motion. He had weakness with resisted supraspinatus testing and less weakness, but moderately weak with infraspinatus testing. His radiographs in the office on the AP radiograph shows a double density on the glenoid concerning for a displaced, inferior and medialized bony bank heart fracture. And the axillary view clearly shows chronic anterior subluxation. The patient's diagnosis consists of post-traumatic glenohumeral arthropathy with posterior superior rotator cuff tear and post-traumatic stiffness after non-operative treatment of an anterior inferior shoulder fracture dislocation. He has a bony bank heart fracture malunion and chronic anterior subluxation. Treatment options, in my opinion, would consist of continued non-operative care. Unfortunately, the patient had experienced no improvement for the past three months. Another option would be attempt to salvage the native joint with a rotator cuff repair and possibly an attempt to address his chronic anterior subluxation with a bone restoration procedure. Or the option would be to address this issue with a reversed shoulder arthroplasty, which is what I recommended to the patient based on his age, activity level, history, and other factors. Once we began the process of planning the reverse arthroplasty, a fine cut CT scan was ordered with complete visualization of the scapula. This is to allow uploading into the Arthrex VIP system for 3D planning purposes. On the 2D CT axial cuts, there's clearly a very large anterior inferior bony bank heart, which is healed medially, and this accentuates an anverted glenoid angle. The options in this case, in my opinion, were to address the bone loss with backside bone grafting and a long central post, or to consider the use of an augmented base plate. Once the, the scan was uploaded into the VIP system, it allowed for 3D planning. And this is one of the primary highlights of the Arthrex system. This allows me to optimize, in this case, maximum base plate backside contact and vault purchase with the longest central post reasonably possible. The VIP system can be very helpful, even in more straightforward cases, as highlighted in a separate video by Dr. Warner. In this case, it allowed me to manipulate the actual implant from a standard backside to a 10 degree or 20 degree augment, as well as customize the position with tilt, version, rotation, and anterior to posterior and superior to inferior translation. One of the other aspects of the Arthrex arthroplasty system that I really think is excellent is the myriad of implant options. With the planning software, I could plan a standard backside base plate. I could plan for the augment or even an anatomic reconstruction all in the same patient and then choose which implant to use. I don't think the surgeon is at all constrained to force a certain implant to work in certain situations when you have so many options. Intraoperatively, the pertinent aspects of this case, um, number one, is careful identification and protection of the axillary nerve. In this particular case, the axillary nerve was significantly scarred in with capsular adhesion along the anterior, inferior, and inferior capsule. I think it's critical to perform carefully a inferior capsule release followed by actual inferior capsule resection to allow uh, protection of the axillary nerve and prevent inferior impingement. 
Following this, uh, careful as usual circumferential capsule release is critical to obtaining an on-face exposure to the planoid and then allowing use of the Arthrex VIP targeter to place the central pin. Once the pin is placed, you can then orient the angled offset reamer and reconstruct your 3D plan. In most patients, I lateralize off of the glenoid to try to optimize the remaining infraspinatus tension and optimize clearance from the glenoid neck. The 20 degree full wedge augment have been planned off of the VIP 3D reconstruction to maximize backside contact. And then the, a 39 millimeter diameter plus four glenosphere was placed. Once again, the lateralization was to lateralize the humerus and improve infraspinatus tension and function, hopefully. And the 39 diameter I had based upon the preoperative templating to give me complete clearance of the anterior, inferior, and posterior glenoid. On the humeral side reconstruction, a 135 degree inclination was selected based on data showing avoidance of scapular notching with a less valgus neck angle. Postoperatively, the patient is now a bit over three months status post-surgery. He reports no pain at rest, minimal pain with vigorous activity. Importantly, he's extremely pleased with his functional restoration and the improvement in the ability to perform self-care and live independently. His active range of motion has improved in all planes, and I would expect that over the next several months, we'll continue to see improvement. Some pertinent things to point out on his post-op radiographs are long central post purchase into the scapula, excellent placement of peripheral screws into the coracoid pillar and posterior lateral scapula pillar, and lateralization of both the glenoid and humeral sides. Thank you for your time.